You will notice this flip book is laid out. You'll notice the flip book is laid out to where that the angle angle examples are all on row one. You can no look at me. You can cut them to make like windows, but you don't have to. It's the same feature if you had not cut it. You will notice that side, side, side examples are all on row two. You will notice that side angle side examples are all on row three. You will also notice, and this is where Ryan was saying that he, he didn't appreciate, and I, I agree with you, the triangles are not dramatically small and big, are they? They all actually look to be the same size, and that's what is a little misleading. So I want you, at the top of your notebook paper, the notebook paper that it's glued to, at the top, I want you to write small triangle, like at the top of your notebook paper, just somewhere. I want you to write small triangle versus big triangle, just so you can remember that despite the sheet not really looking like you have a small versus big, that is the scenario on every one of these. Okay, so this is where this sheet is probably, maybe next year I won't use it because I don't like that they don't dramatically show a difference in size. So try to wrap your mind around there's a small and there's a big. Okay, y'all with me? Um, let's go across the top row. What did we say this is examples of? A, A. Okay, so over here I'm just going to put in big letters A, A, and I'm going to box it in. These are examples of A, A. Look at the very first one. What do you notice about the picture? Angle A is congruent to angle what? D. D. I mean. Right? D. Okay. Please add a degree symbol next to the 80. That bothers me that it doesn't have it. And then angle B is congruent to angle... D? E, right? Are y'all with me? No. Angle B is congruent to angle E. So how many angles have you already stated? Or how many pairs? Two pairs. So then are the two triangles similar by a shortcut? Yes. So we're going to say triangle ABC is similar to triangle. Now if I call it ABC, yeah, A goes from the single mark to the 80 to blank. So i got to go from single to 80 to blank. So it would be DEF. And it's by angle angle. Similarity. That's what you need to write on your paper. Now the next two examples are where the triangles are already similar and we are solving for X. Okay? So if you look at this example right here, do you remember what these arrows mean? It means parallel. Do y'all remember, now this is something that you got you got to think back probably like a month ago. Sorry, math builds. you got to think back to when we had parallel lines cut by a transversal, it created all those angles that are congruent, right? Or the one pair that was supplementary. Okay, so if you imagine, you see these parallel lines here? Yes? All right, and then there's a transversal. Look at this angle. And this angle. They are equal. Do you remember why? Alternate. They're corresponding. Look at it. Look at the four, four compartments created by the lines. Go right. Top right, top left, bottom left, bottom right. 
That is in the bottom left. Look over here. That's in the bottom left. Do you see that? Yeah. Okay, so let's make a note on our paper. This angle is congruent to that one. Now, what do you think is true on the other side? You still have parallel lines cut by a what? So you still have corresponding angles here. You see that? Now, how many triangles do you see? I see two, the small one and then the outer one, right? How many angle, pairs of angles are cut around? So they're similar by angle angle. So we can solve for x. Now, this is something y'all should know how to do. Look at it right now. Set up a proportion and solve for x. Set up a proportion and solve for x in that picture. So looking at the first triangle, you can compare x to 8. Don't write big here, y'all. Now if we compare x to 8, x was the right side of the triangle. Correct? X was over here. Okay, now look at the big triangle. What's the right side? Do you know it? No. No, but can you write an expression for it? X minus X minus X. Now, if it's the whole thing I want, it's not minus, it's plus. So, six, X, so plus six. X plus 6 would go there. And x plus 6 now would compare to, x plus 6 is the right side. Now, 8, can, eight was the, the top of it, the small one. What's the top of the big well, one? There you go. We're in the bottom. Yeah. So cross multiply that and solve. Equals 12. All right, go to this one. Let me show you why this is an example of angle angle because it could come up again. What do you notice about these angles right here in the middle? They're probably the same. They are vertical. Do you remember any time two lines cross? They are congruent. All right. Now, what do the arrows mean? Parallel. Okay, so you've got to imagine you've got railroad tracks right here, and then you've got a transversal. So you have here. Is congruent in here. Do you remember why? What are they called? Uh, alternate, alternate, alternate interior. Alternate interior. They're inside the they're inside the railroad tracks, so they're alternate interior. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so let's make a note. This angle is congruent to that one. So this is why the two triangles are similar by angle angle. Now I want you to solve the proportion. Set it up. This one's a, a little bit easier than the last one. Set up the proportion and solve it right now. Okay, okay, I'm recording. I'm recording. What'd you get? Negative 5.5. Oh. Yeah, this one. So this one I've already made up next year to change it. You do get negative 5.5. You get like negative 11 over 2. Which is not ideal because if you plug negative 5.5 in, you're getting negative numbers. So this would be one of those examples where it was just created to see can you do the math. Your answer is not applicable back to the picture. So algebraically, it's negative 5.5. Is it really possible? No. No. Yeah. It's not. When we solve these, do we have to solve for x? What else would you solve for these? Well, um, um, I was just thinking, it's like, I don't even need to know it. Just, I just thought we would just have to do those angles. Like the, the, what one is that right? Well, right now we were, so the angle angle part is where you're just looking at the picture and you're trying to find two pairs of angles congruent in order to say that they're similar. And if you know they're similar, you can set up a proportion. So this was us practicing what it looks like when they are similar. And then me showing you two examples of triangles where they may not look similar because they don't have angles marked. Like look right here. Do you see how we had to mark the angles? So the angles that are congruent were not marked. You had to know that in order to be able to say they're similar. All right, now let's practice the next one. This one's my favorite. I don't know why. It's probably because I can do the whole small, medium, large thing. This is exactly like your warm up. So, right now, with these two triangles right here, I want you to set up, label the picture small, medium, large, small, medium, large, and set up your three fractions. Set up your three fractions just like you did in the warm up and then check it. Thank you. 
Oh, it doesn't matter. Great question. So, I just had the question, are, is it enlarging or is it shrinking? If you're setting up the proportions to just check, then it doesn't matter how you set it up as long as you're consistent. If I asked you for the scale factor, it would matter. You would then have to know if it's an enlargement or a shrink. But if I just say, hey, are they similar? You can set it up small or large or vice versa, it doesn't matter. All right, what'd you get here? What'd you fill in the top? What's the small, medium, large across the top? Six, seven, eight. Look how fast I filled in my fractions when I did that. There you go. All right, and if you divide all of them, do you get the same thing? So, triangle ABC. Is similar to the DEFM by side, side, side similarity. Now, if there's any room on your paper, maybe go to the notebook paper if you have to. I don't know. I would encourage you to label the small, medium, large on the side, side, side shortcut because then you know exactly what compares to what. It makes it a lot easier. So I don't know if you want to make a note. Label small, medium, large on this shortcut. All right, let's look at the next one. It says um, solve for x. Look at the picture carefully. The inside, these, these numbers should have degree symbols. They don't, so if you could write that next to them. So what it asks us to find, is it an angle or a side? It's an angle. It's an angle. Okay. The sides that are given are to let you know that you can set up your fractions to confirm they are proportional. How many degrees are in every triangle, y'all? 180. 180. So which triangle do I know the most about? The one on the left or the one on the right? I know the most about the one on the right. What's 40 plus 80? 120. Which leaves 60. Now, what is this angle because of vertical? This is 40 because it's vertical. Think of the bow ties. It's right there in the middle. Like a month ago, anytime two lines cross, you have vertical angles. Now, the question is, is x 80 or is it 60? It is 60. This is twisted. It's twisted. The way to remember that is that it's parallel lines, there's your transversal, and they are alternate interior. So let's make a note. X equals 60 because it's alternate interior. All right, look at the last one. Are they similar? This is just like the first one. So right now, set up your proportion. What should you label around the pictures? What should you label? Label the small, medium, and large right now. Are 
All right. What? What do you? What's the small, medium, large of the first triangle? Oh, sorry. Just read to me the small part. All right. Now read to me the other one. All right. And when you divide all those fractions, do you get the same decimal? So the answer is yes. They are similar. You need to be able to do that. When we take this test, it'll have a, like that. It'll say, determine if they're similar. And if so, fill in the similarity statement. So yeah, you need to be able to do that. All right, let's do the last one. What's this one practicing? Sad. Sad. Side angle side. Which means the angle has to be where? The angle has to be in between. Look at the look at the name of the shortcut. The angle is in between the two sides. So come to your picture. Draw an exaggerated arc on the angle that's congruent and the two sides that it's touching are the ones you have to check. And now you would just label them small and large. So look right here. I've got six or eight. So this is small and this is large. Now come to this one. I've got 15 and 20. So this is small and large. Okay, we already know angle A is congruent to angle D, right? Now we need to check the sides. What is the small to small? 6 over 15 is what decimal? 6 one, what is it? 0.4. Okay, now check the large over large. So 8 over 20. Same thing? Okay, so then they're similar. So you would say triangle ABC is similar to triangle, now you've got to watch it carefully, A to B to C. That goes small side to blank side. So I'm going to go small side to blank side, and that'd be D, E, F. And it's by S, A, S, similarity. All right, look at the next one. We have what types of triangles? We have right triangles, which means are these angles congruent? Yes. yes. Okay, now label. You've got small and large. And then, well, it was an S. And then here I've got small and large. All right, small to small. So 5 over 4, what's the decimal? 5 divided by 4. 1.25. All right, and 6 over 5. Oh. Did it match? Nope. So the answer is not similar. Alright, next one we can check in our head. Look, this is 40 degrees here, so what's this? Right. By what reason? 
What's it called? Vertical. All right. This is twisted, y'all. It's twisted. Cause look, um, if you if you look at it carefully, you can kind of see like that. This is the shorter sides, right, of the two. So that's how you know it's twisted. So if I was going from five to fifteen, I would multiply by. Three. Now look and see if you do the same thing with the other. If I was going from 7 to 21, I would multiply by 3. So they are similar. So solve for x. Find x. You'll notice x is here and it's similar to 4. 4 times 3, x is 12. Right? Now, if you didn't see that, then you would set up, let me back up. If you didn't see that, you would say to yourself, okay, x compares to 4, that's left to right, as 15 compares to 5. And then you would still get 12. Okay? That's page 56. Here comes page 57. When we're gonna, we're gonna practice it. assignment. So we got 12 practice problems. Let me pull it up. to understand the difference in what each section is. This section is saying, are they similar? Yes or no? If they are, fill in the statement. What are the three shortcuts, y'all? You got AA, you got AA, you've got SAS, and you've got SSS. Those are your three shortcuts. Now, a common question that people ask is, how do I know which shortcut I'm using? You look at the picture and you see what information is given. So number one, well, do you know the third sides? No, so it can't be SSS. But let me mention something to you that is going to start happening now that we're getting into proofs. If the triangles are touching, you know with me? The triangles are touching. There is a very good chance there's something not marked that should be. Like number one, there is a pair of vertical angles that are not marked. Do y'all see that? So go to your paper right there, and then I want you to draw an arrow to train your mind to see this. Those are vertical angles. So now you can determine it's not SSS we're going to try to use, it's SAS. You already got the angle. Now you've got to check the size and make sure they're the same fraction or decimal. Yeah. No, 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 no. no. Oh, mine were one different. Okay, hold on. Hold on. No wonder some of y'all. We're looking at more like a hold on. Is that it? Yeah. All right, let me go back and just put what I was saying. You got two, three shortcuts. 
right? Okay. Now, what we were saying was this is congruent to this because these are vertical angles. Okay, so the angles are already there. So we're we're once you decide like what shortcut you're taking, maybe write it down and put a question mark. Like, okay, this is the this is the route I'm going. But I don't know if it's yes or no yet. You got to check your sides. So, like in this one, it's tw well, this is easy to check. This is twenty and twenty, and this is thirty-two and thirty-two. So it doesn't matter how you set it up. They're the exact same number, so are these similar? Yes. Yes, so then you can just erase your check mark, I mean question mark, and say yes. Now you gotta fill in the statement. Now you gotta fill in the statement. How do we even do that? Well, look at the picture. They labeled it as PQR. So that was P to Q to R. So they went P to Q to R. So we've got to go P, V, U. All right. That's the first section. Now, what I was saying to you is if the triangles are touching, there is a very good chance there's something not drawn that should be. When the triangles are what's called disjoint, disjoint, disconnected, disjoint, then it is what it is, which is a beautiful thing because there's nothing hidden, there's no secrets, there's no tricks. You're going off of exactly what you see. Now, you may have to find some missing angles in that one. I don't know. It's a little easy. Um, go to the back. Look, this section is saying they are similar, so find the missing value. So you are not determining here if they are or not. They're telling you, hey, they are. Solve for X, okay? And then they're giving you the similarity statements, so if you need to compare anything, you know exactly what to compare it to. And then the last one is also solve for x, but they are binomials instead of a single x, okay? You have 11 practice problems. You have Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, flex. You with me? Y'all need to do them.